that's probably the longest break I hope to ever take from this channel and uploading, but I'm back. I wanna do this Inkscape tutorial to show you how we can do a double exposure type of graphic, and we'll do this octopus. So let's just get into it here. So we'll jump back in the swing of things. The tools we're gonna to be using are Paint Bucket. I'll teach you how to do a vector mask to start with, how masking versus clipping works, and do some gradients to, to make this final product here. So the first thing we need to do is find our piece of artwork and I picked this octopus and this is the source I'll have it in the link below and the first thing we need to do is make a mask because that's how we're going to actually put the two pieces together and we got to create this shape and there's a real simple tool if you watched my Inkscape beginners course or like the slow Inkscape I really hate it on the paint bucket but it, I've grown to love it it's this one right here the quirk to it is it's not going to spit out whatever color you think. So you first have to test with any shape or square circle. Just see what color you're preset to. It's going to adopt that style. So I've got this green, which is fine. I'll go to paint bucket. And usually it's set to visible colors. What, we're gonna, what it's going to do is it'll dump out a color on top of our image. This is actually a transparent PNG, so start with that, because if you're using a transparent image, we can then go back to Paint Bucket and we'll fill it up, not by the color, but instead we'll use Alpha. So Alpha in Inkscape means uh, the transparency. So whatever the, is not uh, blank, so the Alpha is present here, it's going to cover. So the threshold, I did, I cheated, I did this beforehand, is 50, and grow shrink zero, close gaps none, and all you do is click on the image once, and it creates this, basically the mask we're gonna use. So that's pretty easy. Now let's talk about, cause this was something that, st that struck me as difficult to understand when I started using Inkscape, and shout out to Logos by Nick, I learned pretty much almost everything in the beginning from his tutorials, and. Um, but this is what I didn't get. What is the difference between a clip and a mask? So a clip could be any shape. It just happens to be a star. And I'm going to put it over this red rectangle. If you select both, then it's going to clip out whatever the top object is. So I'll go to Object, Clip, Set Clip, and it took that piece, right? So I'll do Control-Z. That's what a clip does. It could be any color. It could be... Could be whatever it is, it's gonna clip, watch, object, clip, set. It'll just clip whatever was on top. All right, so that's very useful when you're making all sorts of things. A mask is very specific to, for today, we're gonna to use a gradient, but just the basics of a mask is whatever is white will be taken, whatever is black will be left behind. So watch what happens here. So white, see the white part and the black part? I've got both pieces. I'll go to object, this time mask, set mask. You see what happened? Just the white went with it. I'll do it again. Object, mask, set mask. All right, well, why is that useful? Well, the other part of a mask is you can use gradients, which is what we're gonna do to make this double exposure. So this time I'll just make a rectangle. We'll make it black and we'll go up to uh, fill and stroke. So let's make the whole thing white, do a linear gradient. And now it will take into account the uh, transparency and look, look what happens. So I've got both object, mask, set mask. See? So that's what we're gonna do to put two pieces together. All right, to keep it super simple, here's our octopus. We want to create this as our mask. So just to repeat the steps, I've got, I'll make it green as my color. I'll dump it. Now here is what I have for my mask, but we wanna make it white because we just learned that's how we can actually extract. And we'll do a gradient. So I do gradient, but it goes from left to right. Now you can change that a couple ways. One is the gradient tool, push this here, and you can see whatever this side is is full opacity, and whatever this side is goes to transparency. To keep things simple, I'll just do it mostly coming from the top 
down to the bottom. And when you have the gradient the way you like it, that's how the mask will um, be. So I've, I've got both selected by just dragging over both. I'll go up to Object, Mask, Set Mask. And that's what we want, all right? So let's go, let's actually use the example one and make this full opacity. Because now we have the bottom, or I guess the top part, let's get the actual um, double exposure part. So this is the source image. This one came from Unsplash, and I'm gonna use it because I was looking for something like an orange sunset that would blend well with the orange octopus. I like this a lot. Um, the credit will be in the description. And for simplicity, because I played around with it quite a bit, this is what we want it to look like, where if you wanna see the gradient, it's just gonna be solid on this diagonal coming up. And again, depend if you wanna follow along just like me, just do this exactly, but whatever you're trying to composite, you can play with it because you want them to really have that nice blend. So let's do the mask on this one. So I'll do shift. I got both pieces, object, mask, set mask. And <laughs> it's pretty cool. That is the bottom. Now, one thing, if you're new to Inkscape, there's a tool that's hidden. It's called snapping. And it's right up here. There's all sorts of snapping. Uh, configurations but just if you're new just just enable snapping by clicking on this because we want to put both pieces together where's the other piece and I also want to make sure this one's on top so while we're on the subject of things you should know that it might be hard to find if you're on the selector tool I've got this I want to put it towards the top see how it's on top now and <clears throat> what I'm trying to say is with snapping like if I were to put use this it'll snap right into place see how it just snap you, you can't tell but um it snapped right into place based on the snapping tool being there so let's put this one on top and <laughs> you could stop there but i don't want to there's one more feature i want to i want to show for the blend modes the default is normal this is normal a little bit dull you can go through them and check it out color burn Interesting, but a little too dramatic. Screen, too faded. I like hard light, right, like that. Remember, since we have two masks that use transparency, we want to use the old, or you can use whatever, but I'm going to use this to put underneath everything because I want it to be a solid white so the colors will pop better underneath it. First, I want to duplicate it because there's one more trick I want to do at the very end. Let's put that aside. Watch what happens. I want to make it go to the bottom. When this comes underneath, it'll snap into place. See how it makes it like the whole thing's more vibrant? Now you can you can dull that if you don't like it too bright. I think it looks a lot better when you have that solid piece underneath it. And then I also thought it looked good. This is pretty good already with the white, but you can play around. Let's put this in the very bottom. And let's change this color to here's dropper, one of the oranges. Just because if you're going to use this on a shirt or something, you want to actually have a little bit of an outline. Like this doesn't look so great, just sand. So do you see how that part was selected? If you didn't, oh, it's over here. It's selected, right? I'm going to slide it under. You can do all sorts of path effects and fancy ways to make it expand. If you just expand it intuitively by drawing it open, it doesn't work. It doesn't correlate exactly. So Control Z that. Instead, you can go to path and see this thing, it says outset. If you push outset a couple times, or you can do control parentheses, I'll just do that. You see how it, it kind of expands itself out? Then I can change the colors. Do you want it to be all white outline, black outline, something orange? I think that's a nice feature, especially if you're making, like I said, something for apparel or some type of like a bag or a sticker even. Just play around with that. And uh, yeah, I was I, I missed I missed doing these. I'm gonna try to make more consistent content. So if there's anything you wanna see, let me know in the comments. I apologize, I haven't been super active down there, but um, I had an opportunity to come up. I'm really excited I took it. And, but I also wanna try to continue this and, and be with you too. All right, uh, thanks, I'll see you.